Hey, hey everyone, I am here today with a story and it's to show to you how Islam just doesn't work in the West. And instead of reading from the Quran today and instead of bringing the hadith and, and all these kinds of uh, technical things, um, also because I don't want to be accused of taking it out of context or you can't read Arabic, therefore you don't read the Quran or you didn't understand it or you, did, you read the wrong translation or any of the typical answers that you get when you actually read from the Quran and people will fight you on it. So instead of doing that, I'm going to bypass that whole thing and I'm just going to go with cultural practices. So, you know, when the far left uh, talk about their, their fantasy utopia of, of, you know, diversity and multiculturalism all living together, sometimes they forget to look at specific ideologies and how it just doesn't work when you try to make people live together. So specifically, uh, Islam, the ideology, does not work so well in the West. Now, proof of that, uh, one, one of the proofs is that the people who don't like Islam, they're fleeing to the West. So, um, but they're also the people who are behind Islam would like to put Islam in the West. They would like to replace all of our Western uh, policies and everything with Sharia. That's what I fight. I fight the Sharia. And of course, it's not all Muslims. And I, I, I feel like I have to say that in every freaking video, because if I say, uh, if I don't say, hey, not all Muslims or hashtag not all Muslims, there's always a couple people that'll go in there and call me Islamophobe and bigoted and whatever. So yeah, it's not all Muslims. I know that. And I think most Canadians, most people in the West understand that. What I'm attacking specifically is Sharia. And I'll give you an example today of something that I had to go through a few weeks ago. And had I been in an Islamic country or had Canada been under Sharia, I would not have been able to do this. So here goes. We've been renovating our house a lot. We bought a beat up house and we're renovating every single room in it. And one of the, uh, the pipes in our bathroom had burst because we drove a nail through it. Now we had to call a plumber and we had to call the city guys to come and shut off the main valve at the front of the house. Now, it's funny, but hey, when I call them a plumber, I always kind of get a man, right? It, it's funny that the feminists who are all like gender equality in everything, they haven't actually thought about, you know, making gender equality in, in those jobs. No, they go after the CEO and the white collar jobs. They don't say we want gender equity in, uh, in plumbing and gender equity in electricians and we won't stop until there's as many female in the mines up in Abbotsford. So anyways, I find it, it's liberal logic. <laughs> what can I say? So male plumber shows up at my house. Now, I said I wouldn't quote from the Quran, but here's what happens under Sharia. Of a female is not allowed to be with a male that is not her husband, her father, her brother, I think her uncle, her son, and maybe a two more very closely family related. Um, so for example, if I'm not married to my male cousin, I wouldn't be allowed to be with him under Sharia. Now, I'm not allowed to be under, um, to be alone with a male that is a plumber because I've never met him before. So that under Sharia would be a big no-no. But what happened is I, I had this plumber alone in my house with me for two hours. Nothing happened. Nothing perverse happened. I don't know what, uh, what Islam is so worried about because I think the West has been able to prove that women and men can be equal in a sense that we can actually be together without one of the two acting in a lewd fashion. So anyways, guy was in my house for two hours. The city guys came um, to my house again, uh, twice actually to turn it off and to turn it back on. I dealt with men without my husband the whole day. Had I been under Sharia, I couldn't have done that. And also my husband would have had to take a day off work. So whether, you know, sometimes guys can work from home, like we can work from home depending on the job. But if you're like a surgeon or a, you know, a mechanic, you can't work from home, right? Those are jobs that require you to be on site in the field. So, uh, you know, th those kinds of uh, jobs would have required the, the guy to take a day off under Sharia. So you'd have to leave your employment and come to the house and wait for the plumber simply because under Sharia, your wife cannot be alone with a plumber. Now, if you think I'm wrong, I've had a lot of people from Saudi Arabia commenting on my videos recently. So go ahead, guys, tell me, am I wrong? Are, are your women in Saudi allowed to be at home alone with a plumber for two hours? Tell me, tell me in the comments. 
Uh, same goes for you, Iran, uh, Iraq, Afghanistan, Pakistan. I mean, I can go down the list of Islamic Sharia countries, Indonesia. Like, can you do that? Can you be alone with a plumber for two hours in your home without the presence of a male? And, and it's not even just those countries. This, this kind of practice is already here in Canada. I've already done a video about that woman who started her own driving school in Ottawa because she's not allowed to drive next to or teach a man that she's not related to. She can't do that without being chaperoned. So she'd have to have a male guardian in the car at all times. So she opened up a female only driving school. And, and the female, the feminists went and hailed that as a good thing, as if it's a, it's a good thing that we're regressing our, our Western values to make it so that we can meet up with Islam like that we don't want to do we want Islam to come and meet up with us like it, that's the wrong way to go so um you know and and the feminists you can't align with with this kind of practice you you cannot seriously align yourselves with Islam and saying that Islam accords equal value to male and female when this kind of practice is genuinely happening in all of the Islamic countries that are governed by Sharia you, you can't say it with it. You can't be taken seriously anymore if this is what you're saying. You say the hijab is a wonderful uh, expression of individuality and, and non-oppression. That's also wrong, but you can't seriously say, you know, because you can't be alone with a man, that that's a good thing. You, you've kind of like missed the boat on that. Either you're so misinformed that you just don't even know what you're talking about, or you're trying to pull the wool over our eyes the same way that the Islamists are trying to do. They're trying to convince us that there's nothing to worry about in Islam. It's all good. It's so peaceful. There's another agenda here, and that's what I'm trying to bring here. So, simple everyday example that I go through. Many other Canadian women go through this. We deal with male, male that are not rel relatives of ours on a daily basis, and we have zero problem doing that in the West and and I hope that that this kind of video this kind of example doesn't even include uh, quotes from the Quran can just show you guys out there that if we were to allow Sharia this would be one of the freedoms we would lose many many more but the ability of a Canadian woman to welcome a plumber into her home to do a job would be no longer accepted under Sharia so that's why I'm trying to stop it so there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next one.